Hello everyone, it's Jo here again. I hope you're doing well. If you saw my last video, you'll see I did a grocery haul. And um, what I'm actually going to do today is show you what I actually cooked for the grocery haul. I did include a meal plan in the last grocery haul and I will link to it up above so you can see it. So I thought I'd actually show you how I cook my meal plan and what I do. Now tonight is Tuesday the 3rd of January. I'm st I am starting my what I eat in a week tonight. Because it is sort of the first ever normal working week, although I'm not actually at work today. I'm only at work tomorrow this week. And then Thursday and Friday I'm off because I only usually work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But the school and the nursery are closed today, so that's why I'm off. So... Shirley's upstairs about to bath the kids. I'm going up there in a minute once I've got our dinner started. And tonight we are having a chicken curry with naan bread, rice and some poppadoms and a few condimenty bits to start with. So I thought I'd show you how I cut my curry. So let's go. It's very simple. I make it with batak's curry paste. So this one's tikka masala. I don't know if you can see it very well. onions, chicken thighs and tomato passata. You have to excuse me, I have to duck in but so you can see the bowl. So I'm doing this in my new surf on wok which I haven't been sent to review, I actually bought it myself and I love it. So I'm just going to fry off the curry paste for a couple of minutes. Add in the chicken, add in three small chopped onions and then add in the tomato passata. I used, you could use chopped tomatoes as well, but I use passata because my husband doesn't like the tomato bits. And then add in a bit of hot water and then in the oven for a couple of hours it goes. Okay, so I've just added in the chicken thighs, the onions, and the onions into the curry paste. And I'm just frying them off together for a minute or two before I add in the passata then in there it goes with the tomato passata Then in goes a splash of water from the kettle, just so it's hot. So that there is the curry with everything in it. I'm just going to drop the temperature down slightly. So that leaves a couple of hours in the oven now. 180 degrees for about two to two and a half hours. Just give it a stir occasionally and we will have a delicious dinner. I'll pop by and check in with you later. So here is tonight's starter. Just a few poppadoms, cucumber and mint writer, spicy lime pickle and mango chutney. We don't usually have a starter, but I had a few bits left over from Christmas, so we're using it up before we have our curry. So I'm going to dig in now. So here is the finished curry. You'll see it's gone from red to quite a brown. That's the spice paste that's worked through the tomatoes. It's had about two and a half hours. So we at 180 with the lid on in the oven, stone occasionally. Now you can leave the curry pretty much for as long as you want. If it reduces down too much then you can just add a bit more water give it a stir and just loosen it up again if you want to so this curry is really versatile and really easy so i'm just going to finish it off with some fresh coriander you don't need to do this but it was shopping day to day and i happened to buy some so so 
So there you go, just give it a stir in and just let it sit there for a minute while I do the rice on the naan bread. Here is the finished dish, curry rice and naan bread. Happy Tuesday night everyone. Hello everyone, it's Wednesday night and it is 10 past 9 in the evening and I've been at work today and excuse the noise, that's the hub. But uh, for various reasons I'm having a very late Tuesday night with these chicken chow mein stir fry type thing. So I'm just frying off some chicken breast in the pan with some spice, five spice. And I'll add the noodles and the veg shortly. So I've just put in a very large bag of stir fried veg, of stir fried veg from Tesco, you know, large stir fried veg, I think it's called, in there. And I'm just about to put a drop of water from the kettle in. Give it a bit of a stir. Then I'm going to clamp the lid on this for a few minutes to steam the veg down a bit. And make sure everything's cooked through before I add the noodles. So the veg is cooked down now. I cooked it with the lid on for about 5 to 10 minutes just so it could steam. And then I stir and I just took the lid off for a few minutes so the uh, excess water could steam off. Don't add water and try and film at the same time is obviously the lesson in that. So I'm about to add the noodles and add my sauce. Before I add the sauce, this is a Tesco chow mein stir fry sauce, one of the fresh ones that came in the deal with the noodles and the veg. With about 50 ml of soy sauce added. I always use Kickerman. A couple of teaspoons of fire spice, a squirt of garlic puree and a squirt of ginger puree. And then that's all just been mixed together in a jug to make a sauce. I do like the fresh sauce from the supermarket, but I always think they need an extra kick. Just give it a good stir through. Right, everything's coated. And that to cook for a few minutes and then the dish is finished. And I get to sit down. Yay! So here is the finished dish. It's sort of chow mein-esque. And yeah, I don't really care about the presentation because it's 10 o'clock at night and I just want to eat and I've been up since 6.30 this morning. So there you go. It's not perfect, but it's what you do when you've had a long day at work. And you just want something quick, although it's 10 o'clock at night, to feed yourself. So, there you go. See you tomorrow. Evening folks, it's Thursday the 5th of January. And uh, tonight we're having fish and chips. So the fish is just frozen from the supermarket that I'm going to put in the oven in a minute. And these are the chips I've made. They're going in the active fry. They are Maris Pipers, I've just chopped them up into you know chip shapes there's a clue and I'm just going to put in some because we're probably a bit too close mellow yellow rapeseed oil which is my favourite oil for these uh, so these are Maris Piper potatoes and I use them all the time I do chips and roast potatoes so they're going to go into the active fry, it's just a normal one for about 45 minutes or so, maybe 50, depends on how they look after 45 minutes. And I'm also multitasking tonight because that there in the in my stand mixer bowl is the third layer of Daniel's birthday cake. The other two layers are in the oven already. So yeah, then I'm going to have fish chips and a tin of mushy peas for me, because Stuart doesn't like him. So yeah. So that's our dinner tonight and I'll be back with the finished dish later. 
So here is dinner tonight. It's uh, frozen bird eye cod fillets, anti fried chips, and some mushy peas. Though I will be honest and say I actually took the wrong tin out of the cupboard and actually used normal peas. So I've actually just mashed them up to make mushy peas. So that's my tea tonight. So we shall see. I've really got to stop saying so in videos. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Tonight we're having steak pie for dinner. I've just lined up. It's actually a flan tin. We'll move you into the better light. We had the homemade short crust pastry that I made in the food processor earlier. And I'm actually going to fill it with this. Now I used to have this when I was a dad when I was little and it used to be really good. And for my dad that was what was considered cooking with potatoes and peas. So but I'm putting it in the pie tonight. So it's sort of homemade-ish. And uh, we're going to have that with some new potatoes and some peas. So I'll quickly show you what the pie looks like when it's finished once I put this in and put the top on. There's the finished pie ready for the oven. Because I have a bedding oven it's got an intensive bake feature on it so it can go in completely raw. Obviously the filling's cooked and it takes about 30 minutes or so, 20-30 minutes on the intensive bake setting. So it is really worthwhile if you get one of these ovens to do this. So and then we've just got new potatoes, peas and gravy to serve with it. So I'll be back again later once I've done all that. And there's the finished dinner, so it's pie, new potatoes and peas with gravy. Um, the pie kind of fell apart, so I've got mine without the big crust around the end. So, but yeah, nearly homemade pie with new potatoes and peas. Friday night dinner. Well, we're now on to Saturday on the What I Ate in a Week vlog. And... Uh, I'm actually prepping for tomorrow now because it's Saturday lunchtime. We're about to go to the pub and have something to eat, which wasn't planned, but I might include you in the video of it anyway, but we're just going to go to the pub. So now uh, we're having a little party tomorrow for Daniel's birthday, for these three next week, and uh, we're just keeping it simple. We've got roast pork and roast gammon sandwiches, although I'm actually doing a glazed gammon this time. And before I glaze my gammon, I always cook it in the slow cooker, so I just thought I'd show you how I do it quickly. So just turn you around. It is literally just in the slow cooker. So, and then I just put it in there for four and a half, four hours on it, on its own on high and it cooks in its own juices and you don't need to add anything to it and it will be the most tenderest gammon you've ever seen. So give it a go and you will have to trust me. And I'm going to glaze it tonight while I'm also finishing off decorating Daniel's birthday cake. So I'll show you how to do the glaze later on. There are millions of recipes for gammon in the slow cooker. So this is just a 1.3 kilogram joint of gammon just from the supermarket. And there's, you can boil it in coke, you can boil it in apple juice, you can put it in cider, you can do what you like with it. But all I actually do with mine is I actually just put it in the pot on its own. And over the four hours it cooks, it actually makes its own juices. Then tonight when I get back from having a few beers and before I decorate Daniel's cake, which is sat over there, before I finish decorating it off, then I'm going to glaze it in char siu style, so like Chinese barbecue style, so I'll show you how to do that later. So I'm just going to put the slow cooker on now and then uh, get ready to go out. See you later Gavin. Folks, today is Sunday, it is Daniel's birthday and I'm just going to finish glazing off the gammon now and then I'm going to put the pork in for lunch in a bit after we've opened his presents because though today actually isn't Daniel's birthday for all purposes we're pretending it is. So for, to make the gammon, get, so let me just turn you around and I'll show you what I'm doing with the gammon. So here's the gammon, it's just been in the slow cooker for four hours yesterday. You see it's in front of Daniel's cake which I'll show you properly later. And what I'm going to do now is a char siu glazed gammon, so it's sort of like Chinese barbecue style. So over here I've got soy sauce, hoisin sauce, brown sugar, a bit of fire spice and a bit of garlic and ginger puree all mixed together. Now I will be putting this recipe on the blog, so don't worry too much about it. And I'm just going to put that on the gammon now and glaze it and then let it cool. So then I can photograph it later for the blog recipe and then we can eat it. Yeah, and then I'm just going to roast the pork in the oven as you would do normally. So I'll be back again in a bit. 
I forgot to mention that I am using a four tray for this that I had left over from Christmas. It's just because this does get very, very messy and very, very sticky. So it cuts down on the washing up. And as I've got a broken dishwasher at the moment, anything that cuts down on the washing up is very, very good. Okay, everyone, it's 10 to 1 on Daniel's birthday. Yes, I am still in my pyjamas. Uh, uh, we're having pork, roast pork stuff in some, roast pork and stuff in sandwiches and roast gammon, chartered gammon sandwiches. So we've got people coming in an hour and the pork's nearly ready to come out of the oven. It's had about three hours. It's a joint of pork leg, two kilograms, but it's boneless. I didn't show you how to cut that because you know how to roast pork. So I'm just making my stuffing now, which is the instant kind because I'm lazy. So, but what I do do is, uh, I'll just flip you around, give me a second. What I do do though is I add some butter and I add some extra sage and I add some extra salt and pepper into it. Sometimes I add some raw onions into the stuffing too, but today I can't be bothered and as it's going on sandwiches you don't really need it, I don't think. So I'm just going to put some water in now. Use my arm blocking the screen. I guess the water I do. And give it a stir. And then I'm going to let it rest for a bit while I go upstairs and finally get dressed because we have people coming in an hour. Oh, very smoky and steamy. So yeah, that's how I do my stuff in. You can make it your own obviously if you want to, but I'm lazy. video uh sorry i haven't really finished it properly so this is me coming out to finish properly now i did a little bit of filming earlier just showing the roast pork and the gammon that i did <coughs> excuse me but uh because i had a house full of people i couldn't really talk to you very much then but so the roast pork was just in the oven not a normal way and the gammon was glazed as i showed talked to you about earlier so i will do a full recipe on the blog for that although it's not the most attractive thing to photograph so just thank you very much for watching uh this is probably a long what I ate this week video, so if you do make it to the end, please comment, comment, ga comment gammon in the, in the thing below. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please give it a big thumbs up if you like this and would like me to do some more. And uh, I'd love it if you subscribe too. So thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>